So what is a PSA test? Well firstly, PSA stands for prostatic specific antigen. PSA is a chemical that's produced exclusively by the prostate gland. It's found both within a man's bloodstream and it's also found within a man's ejaculate fluid. The role of PSA normally is to liquefy semen. We use PSA as a diagnostic tool. It's a simple blood test and that blood test allows us to determine what a man's PSA value is. A lot has changed with regards to our understanding of PSA over the last few years. It used to be that a PSA greater than 4 we thought was abnormal and a PSA less than 4 we thought was normal. However, with improved understanding and more research being available, we now know that we have different aspects of PSA that can improve our ability to try and interpret this test. What that means is that for men within their 40s, we accept a specific value, a value of less than 2.5. And in fact, the median value or the most common value of PSA for men within the decade of their 40s is 0.6. For men within their 50s, that value should be less than 3.5 and the most common value, the median value, is 0.9. For men in their 60s, a value of less than 4.5 is acceptable and the median value for men in that cohort is around 1.2. So you can see already that we're starting to refine what we constitute as normal or abnormal in terms of a PSA test. So in, in addition to age-specific values, and median values for men within specific age ranges, we also have a couple of other aspects of PSA that try to improve the utility of the test. Now these include free to total ratio and also PSA kinetics or velocity, the rate of change of PSA. So let's take a look at free to total ratios. What does that mean? Well, we know that PSA that is produced by prostate cancer has a different affinity for proteins in the bloodstream. What that means is that the PSA that's produced by cancer sticks more readily to these proteins within the bloodstream. Whereas PSA that's produced by benign disease doesn't stick as much as that that's produced by malignant disease. As a result, the lower the free to total ratio, the greater a man's risk of having prostate cancer and the uh, greater a free to total ratio, the, uh, there is a reduction in a man's risk of having prostate cancer. So you can see there is an inverse correlation between free to total ratios and risk of having prostate cancer. If we take a look at velocity now, that implies the rate of change. How quickly is a PSA changing over a predefined period of time? Now strictly speaking, we should have three values of PSA over a 12 month period to get an accurate velocity. We are more comfortable with a velocity of 0.3 to 0.35 nanograms per mil over a year's period and that is more in keeping with a benign production of PSA. We become more suspicious that a cancerous process is uh, at play if that rate of change is around 0.65 to 0.7 nanograms per mil. So by combining these various aspects of PSA, absolute value, correlation to age-specific threshold, relationship to the median value uh, in a particular decade, free to total ratio, and also velocity, we can improve the utility of this test. Our aim is to try and detect prostate cancer at an early stage so that we can improve our ability to cure this disease. If there are any abnormalities of the various aspects of PSA, the next step is to proceed on with a biopsy of the prostate gland.